Don't forget to visit www.linksixsigmaforall.eu. Discovering the Kano model, a critical first step to understanding your customers better than they understand themselves. Research has proven that the decisions customers make when buying products and services work at a conscious and subconscious level. What this means is, in order to be successful, we must understand our customers' needs much better than our customers can articulate them. The point here is simple. Customers are only able to give you part of the formula for success. So if this is true, how can we gather all the necessary requirements to consistently design winning products and services that deliver on value, quality, and innovation? Part of the answer lies in a model developed by Japan's professor, Noriaki Kano. His model describes three distinct and unique types of customer needs that occur at a conscious and subconscious level. If we miss any of these, we'll likely end up with a lukewarm offering that's not very competitive or profitable. The model starts with a set of axes where three types of requirements will be plotted. The vertical axis is a satisfaction level, from very satisfied on the top to very dissatisfied on the bottom, and neutral in the middle. The horizontal axis objectively describes how well each need has been executed or fulfilled. All the way to the right, the need has been very well executed, all the way to the left, executed very poorly or not at all. We'll give you a product and service example to illustrate the three categories of requirements. Let's start with a product example. Fuel economy on a car. So the first of three types of requirements are called performance requirements. Performance requirements can both satisfy and dissatisfy the customer depending on how well they're executed. These requirements are at the top of your customer's mind and consciously evaluated when deciding which product or service to buy. Customers will typically speak easily about these needs when asked what's important. If the vehicle gets 12 miles per gallon, you'd likely be in the lower left of this model, 24 miles per gallon here, and 65 miles per gallon here. A service example, let's say, is check-in time at a hotel. If the hotel takes 10 minutes to check in, you'd likely be here, 3 minutes here, and 20 seconds up here. This is what the performance needs look like. The second type of requirements are called basic requirements. Their presence doesn't directly add to satisfaction, but their absence will result in extreme dissatisfaction. These are the requirements that customers typically don't give much thought to or even talk about unless they are violated. They are the givens, items that are expected and taken for granted. A product example might be a car door's ability to miss a standard curb when parked next to it. If it hits the curb when opening the door, customers will obviously be quite upset. If the door easily clears the curb, the customers won't even notice and their satisfaction remains neutral. A service example might be providing the right temperature in a hotel's conference room. Too hot or too cold, the guests will likely be very uncomfortable and verbally complain. If the temperature is perfect, customers likely won't even notice. Their satisfaction will remain neutral. The third and my favorite type of requirements are called the excitement requirements. Kano originally called these attractive or delighters. These are the innovations that differentiate you from the competition. Some people call these the wow factor or USPs, unique selling propositions. They delight the customer when delivered, but don't cause any dissatisfaction when missing. They also play a critical role in the success of the most profitable products and services because they're often linked to emotions and unmet or latent needs. A product example of this might be a car that can't get dirty so it never needs to be washed. Or how about a cell phone that never needs to be charged? If either of these are missing in your next purchase, you'll be neutral. But if they are present, your satisfaction will likely soar. A service example might be a hospital that will order in a meal from a patient's favorite outside restaurant and deliver it to their room. Again, you won't be dissatisfied if you didn't get this service, but you'll be delighted if you receive it with very little or no extra charge. Excitement requirements delight the customer when they're present, but don't result in any dissatisfaction if they are absent.
Another important detail about the Kano model, especially excitement quality, is how the requirements can jump categories over time. History has proved that what is exciting today will be asked for tomorrow and expected the next day. In other words, excitement qualities will become performance and eventually basic. A few examples of this phenomenon are cameras and internet access in cell phones, power steering in a car, pay at the pump in a gas station, and free wireless internet in most coffee shops. All these were unique and great innovations at one point in time, but are common practice today and expected by the customers. The new learning point here is the need to continually prime the pump with new ideas and innovations, because those excitement qualities will differentiate your products and services for only a brief period of time before they're copied, circumvented, or adopted by all of your competitors. Two additional but relatively rare requirement categories to mention in the Kano model are the indifferent and reverse requirements. Indifferent requirements are the features or needs that customers don't care about if they're present or absent. Reverse requirements, even rarer, are the features, needs, or attributes that decrease satisfaction when present and increase satisfaction when they're missing. Also, although we won't go into the details in this fundamentals video, there's also a method called the Kano survey that researchers can use to determine and graphically plot which of the five categories all of your product or service requirements fall into. Check out the KanoModel.com website for more details on this method. To summarize, the Kano model helps teams better understand what the three main categories of customer requirements are and how they influence satisfaction so you can prioritize your development efforts and find holes in your market research. So, half of the challenge is knowing what are Kano's three main categories of needs. We have that covered now. The other half that Kano never taught is how to effectively gather these three categories of requirements for your specific project. In the second part of this video on KanoModel.com, you will discover industry best practices for how to effectively gather these three categories of requirements with an emphasis on the Kano's excitement quality. We do this through an eight-step process we call systematic innovation. You can also find information on how and where the Kano model fits into a product development process as seen on this flowchart and our eight-step process. Thanks for watching the video, and please contact us with any questions at info at